Welcome to MAKE, a course taught at the University of South Florida. This tutorial discusses pin change interrupts with the Arduino. We will discuss how to use such pin change interrupts with a button array. We will discuss Arduino input-output ports and we will uh, discuss briefly how to address them directly using port registers. The Atmega 328P microcontroller chip that is on the Arduino Uno board has uh, three banks of input-output pins, uh, basically groups of input-output pins, and each of these groups is called a port. And so we have three ports, uh, B, C, and D. And here on the um, figure you see how the pins of the chip are associated with those ports. So port uh, B is green, port C is blue, and port D is orange. So these ports have uh, eight or seven pins. And, um, and so there are registers uh, associated with each of these ports and these registers which is simple bytes essentially in the uh, memory of the of the chip uh, they contain the uh, information associated with those port pins so in these registers you can for example set the input output setting so you can make a, a, a pin an input or an output depending on whether there's a one or a zero in the in that um, corresponding register the other registers that contain the information that one can put out through the pins and then there's also a register that has the pin state in them we will see later how we can read this out with a very simple command by using just an assignment between a variable and the appropriate uh, register name. And this register name that can be looked up in the Atmega 328P datasheet at this link down here. Now each of these ports they have one pin change interrupt associated with them. Port B has uh, pin change interrupt 0, port C has pin change interrupt 1, and port D has the interrupt number 2 associated. So you see already the uh, potential issue because we have only one interrupt per um, eight or seven pins and that means once such an interrupt is triggered by a change on one of those pins of a port we actually have to figure out in the interrupt service routine which pin actually has changed that is one of the limitations of the pin change interrupt the other limitation is is that the pin change interrupt can only detect a toggling of the um, of the pin condition so it cannot detect a rising edge or a falling edge like the external uh, interrupts can here you see how the input output ports of the atmega 328 chip are related to the arduino pin numbers that you find on the arduino uno board and it turns out that ports d and b they are essentially responsible for the regular digital pins so that's what you see here what's labeled uh, golden port b does the higher numbers of the digital pins and port d does the lower numbers of the digital pins now port c drives the analog pins a0 through a5 so that's what you see here as always uh, when you use arduino pins it is of course important to keep in mind that uh, some of these pins have dual uses, so if you use the I2C bus, then of course it's wise to stay away from uh, A5 and A4. If you use the SPI bus, then you don't use digital pins 13 through 11. And of course, if there is serial com uh, communication, uh, then don't use digital pins 0 and 1. Each of those ports has a pin change interrupt associated with them. So port B has pin change interrupt 0, port C has PCI 1, and port D has PCI 2 associated with it. So these interrupts are called whenever one of the pins of the port are changing from 0 to 1 or from 1 to 0. We cannot identify in what direction this uh, change is going with this type of interrupt. So what happens then is the Arduino main loop, symbolized here with the blue box, right, the program counter churns through here usually, but when one of these interrupts is being called, then the 
the program counter jumps into the appropriate interrupt service routine. So if uh, PCI2 would be called, then we would uh, execute this interrupt service routine. If uh, uh, interrupt1 would be called, then we would jump into this one and so forth. The three interrupt service routines uh, that, that serve these three ports, they are distinguished by the interrupt vector. The names of these vectors, they are predefined in the Arduino IDE. And the syntax here is to just write uh, interrupt service routine name and then PCINT and X is 0, 1 or 2 depending on which of these interrupts you want to serve with this interrupt service routine. As pointed out before, the interrupts are called if any of these pins on one of those ports changes. Uh, from 0 to 1 or from 1 to 0. Once the interrupt is called, we don't know which pin actually triggered it. So if you had several switches connected to these pins and you wanted to know which of these switches actually triggered the interrupt, then you would need to find out about the uh, pin states in the interrupt service routine. And this can be done with a very simple approach. The state of the pins of a port can be read out by simply equating a variable, a byte variable, with the um, uh, appropriate register that contains that information. And this register is called PINX, and X is either B, C, or D, depending on the port you are working with. One more thing. The uh, pin change interrupts are not to be confused with the so-called external interrupts. Even though one could think of pin change interrupts also as external interrupts, since we are simply connecting something to a pin from the outside. But um, uh, per the terminology in the data sheet, uh, external interrupts, those are those two dedicated interrupts that only work with pins 2 and 3 on the Arduino and there's actually a separate tutorial about that. Now it's time to talk about the Arduino setup that we're using in this tutorial. So a few words about uh, inputs and outputs uh, on the Arduino. If you want more detail about this, there's actually a separate tutorial it's called Arduino Hardware, which discusses and also simulates um, these pins. This schematic shows the basic circuit uh, on each of these pins. Probably the most important feature for us here is that there is a uh, internal pull-up resistor on the Arduino chip, on the Atmega chip, which can be activated with the digital write uh, pin number comma high command. So whenever you set the pin to high, what happens is the switch here is closed. So whenever this is closed, the resistor is connected to 5 volts up here. And that means as long as we don't connect anything to the pin, so this is the pin here, and I already drew the uh, switch, but uh, the switch is open now at this point. So if nothing is connected here, then that means that the uh, pin is high because no current is uh, flowing through the resistor, so no voltage drops, and basically that pulls up this uh, pin to 5 volts. So it reports a high logical signal, a 1, to the, uh, to the processor. Now, as soon as we close the switch, a current starts flowing. We're making a short circuit, essentially. And this resistor here then has current, and all the voltage, of course, drops across the resistor. So that means that we have here a logic zero, or zero volts. The remaining features are those two diodes, which are there to protect the pin. You see they are in reverse direction, so whenever the pin would go above 5 volts, it would uh, short circuit to 5 volts, or if it goes below ground, it short circuits to ground. Uh, that did diverts any uh, current caused by high voltages uh, from the logic circuitry further inside on the chip. And this capacitor, that just um, stands for the entire capacitance of this uh, setup. This here shows a fritzing diagram of the circuit. So all you need to do is connect five switches um, to Arduino pins 3 to 7. And these switches are supposed to connect the pins um, to ground, right? which is all connected here into the uh, power rail and then here to the ground connector on the Arduino. Uh, 
Now pins 3 to 7, they are all on port D, so we will use the um, pin change interrupt number 2. Now it's time to discuss the Arduino sketch. In the beginning, as usual, we have a few defines. Um, here we set the uh, switch, the pins where we hook up the switch. I call them switch pin uh, 1 through 5, so they are on, on pins 3 to 7 of the Arduino. And as I said before, these are on port D, and so we will use the pin change interrupt 2, which is uh, abbreviated PCI2. We will use those clear bit and set bit uh, macros that uh, we used before. So in essence, this uh, slightly cryptic definition here gives us two commands where we can set a bit in a register and we can use the bit names and register names as they are given in the datasheet. This is all defined in the Arduino IDE. The next is to define the volatile variables, uh, global variables that are used in the interrupt service routine. So we have the event time, um, with previous event time, time since last event, and uh, port D status and event flag. So anything that has to do with time needs to be long unsigned because uh, we have four byte numbers, um, the uh, variable that interacts with the uh, port status is only a byte because we will just read the uh, port D register into this variable. And the event flag, is, since it's only 0 and 1, we also get away with a byte. Okay, then we go into the setup. Here we start the serial uh, communication at 9600 baud. Then we define the five input pins as input and we digital write them high which uh, means that we connect the internal pull-up resistor so this uh, allows us to simply connect the switches to ground and we don't have to use an external pull-up to make sure they are at 5 volts when the uh, pin is not connected to ground via the switch. Okay, then uh, in the setup we set up the interrupt and here we use these the SPI command. So here we get away with just setting bits, we don't have to clear any. And the first command is to set the interrupt enable bit PCI2 for the, for the PCI2 uh, interrupt. And this bit is called PCIE2 and the register's name is PCICR. Uh, let's have a look at the data sheet real quick. Uh, here I'm in, in chapter 12, uh, subsection 2.4, and you can download the data sheet here from Edmail uh, website. And this is the uh, definition of the PCICR pin change interrupt control register, and there we have these three bits. And you can see here in the description, bit number two, this one here, that is the pin change interrupt enable 2, so this is for uh, port D. So this is the, the bit name, PCIE2, and this is the register name. And when we go back to the Arduino IDE, then you see I just simply copy-pasted those cryptic acronyms into the SPI command. So it's really easy to use uh, and uh, very easy to enable this interrupt. Then um, we need to set the interrupt mask, right? Because we have uh, eight pins on this port, but we only use five. So we only want the interrupt triggered if uh, something happens on these five pins. Pins zero and one actually on this port are the serial port. So if we wouldn't uh, set this mask, then every time we have a serial communication in the, uh, in the main loop down here, then this interrupt would be triggered. Of course, that wouldn't be great. So we need to set this mask. And the mask simply, this is a, a, another register, PCMSK2 for the interrupt 2 for port D. And here we have the bit names that correspond to those um, pins. In fact, if you look closely here, uh, previously in this tutorial I showed you the, um, the Atmega 328P pinout. And there you may have seen these uh, acronyms already. So let's go to the datasheet real quick and have a look at this 
register. So we need to scroll down a little bit. It's further down. So, um, oh no, I went too far. So here, this is it. The PCMSK2 pin change mask register 2. And so what we're doing is pins uh, 23 or PCINT23 to PCINT19 bits. Those we need to uh, set to 1 in order to enable the uh, interrupt for those pins and to ignore these here. So this here stays 0. Okay, a again, that was a very simple use of the SBI command. All you do is you look up in the data sheet the names and you put them in there. And when it says in the data sheet set them, then you just use the SBI. And if it says to clear them for a certain purpose, then you use the CBI. So really easy to uh, set these registers. Um, let's have a look at the interrupt service routine. So if a button is pressed, then any of the five buttons is pressed, then we jump into the ISR. And here you see the PCINT2 vect. So this is the vector for that uh, uh, pin change interrupt 2 associated with port D. There's also in the data sheet you will find a interrupt vector table and there it's obvious how this name comes about. Then uh, once we are once the interrupt is triggered, we need to figure out which of the pins triggered it and that's what we're doing with the port D status. A byte variable that the, that we defined up there, and we simply equate it with PIND, and PIND is the register that contains the status of the pins of port D, 0 to 7. So each of the bits in, in this byte tells us whether the associated pin is 0 or 1. Then we note the time when this uh, interrupt was called, and um, th here we use the variable event time and equate it with the millis function, which gives us the time since the Arduino was turned on in milliseconds. And then finally we set the event flag to 1, and this will be used here in the main loop to detect whether an interrupt was present, whether somebody pressed the button. So the main loop can do whatever it does. The interrupt simply sets the event flag and then when the main loop has time, then uh, the event flag is being used here to detect whether we need to do something and respond, and respond to the pressed button. Okay, and um, well, so here we have an if statement and um, we check whether the event flag is 1. And we also check whether the event time minus the previous event time is larger than 100 milliseconds. So this debounces uh, effectively the buttons. Remember, every time you press a mechanical button, there are several on-off events until it settles uh, into the state that is corresponding to uh, when it's pressed. Okay, so if we clear this if statement and make it inside, then uh, we write we we uh, calculate the time since the last event by using that event time that comes out of the ISR, and we subtract the previous event time, and then we set the event time as previous event time for the next time an event comes about, and then we put here out on the serial uh, port the time since the last event in milliseconds, and we also print the port status as a binary number. And so when we uh, run this sketch now, then you will be able to see uh, exactly which pin, which of these five pins actually uh, becomes a zero uh, when we press the button, right? Zero means that the pin is low and if, the but if no button is pressed, then the pins are pulled up to five volts. So they show up as a one in the port D status uh, byte. And after we did all this, then we set the event flag back to zero, and we're ready for the next um, for the next event that we can then print out on the serial port. Here, we don't really um, do anything with the information which uh, which uh, button was pressed. Right, we simply print it here as a demonstration. But if you would have some real Arduino sketch going and and would use this uh, pin change interrupt. Then here you would put a case structure or an if-then uh, setup 
where you look at the individual uh, bits in port D status and then you could react individually to each of the buttons as they are pressed. Before we run the sketch, uh, let's look at the port register real quick that we're using to get the uh, status of the pin. So here is pin D that's in chapter 13.4.10 in the data sheet and the five pins that we're using they correspond to the um, most significant bits in this register so 7 through 3. This is rather a coincidence that the Arduino pins have the same numbers now than the, uh, than the bit references. But these are essentially the, the uh, five bits that we need to watch now when the uh, sketch is running. So you see whenever I press a button in the video when the sketch is running then you will see a zero in the uh, printout. Except with this one here because the serial port swallows a zero that is in front of a number. So you just see instead of of eight ones uh, or of an uh, 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 eight bit uh, binary number, you see one that has only seven bits when I press this one because this zero simply doesn't make it to the um, monitor window. But when you press this, 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 and this one, then uh, we will get a, a zero in these positions. So let's have a look at the serial monitor as the sketch is running. So watch where the zero is as the buttons are pressed. It seems this worked nicely. So this concludes our tutorial about pin change interrupts with the Arduino. Thanks for watching.